The new Casio AP750 is one of the most expensive digital pianos that Casio has ever produced. And it also boasts some of the top piano technology that they've ever released. But is this potentially the highest value Casio digital piano that they've ever come out with? Now at over 3,000 US dollars and well over 4,000 in Canadian and other markets around the world, it's kind of an odd thing to say, but this is where I'm coming from here. This piano has an eight speaker system. It has four discrete amplifiers, and it's also loaded up with three full multi-layered stereo sampled uh, pianos from Beckstein, Homburg Steinway, and Bösendorfer. So for that money, go find me another digital piano with eight speakers and three fully diverse, beautifully captured concert grands like that. And you're gonna come up a little bit short because to get those kinds of specs, you would need to move up into the six, seven, and $8,000 territory from any of the other digital pianos from Kawhi, Yamaha, or Roland. So first, let's just do a little bit of playing on those three core samples. We'll start with the Beckstein. Now I'll switch over to the Hamburg. and then the Bösendorfer.
three truly different experiences, both in terms of the responsiveness, the sound stage, uh, different uh, ranges and aspects of the tone that are coming at me differently, but the mid and upper mid range of the kind of the EQ coming out of this instrument is hyper detailed, clearly a result of the multi-channel wide speaker array and also the use of this lid, which is really helping to direct some of those upper details and artifacts towards my ear as a player. And perhaps in a really good sign, I'm not sure I can actually pick a favorite sound. There are aspects of the Beckstein that I really like, and particularly the, in, in certain ranges. There's aspects and dynamic ranges of the Busendorfer that I really appreciate, as well as the same with the Hamburg. Add to that, that there is a full acoustic simulator that goes along with this, which basically gives you all of your resonance engines and other secondary tones that you can manipulate and change the volume of, and you really have an incredibly wide palette that you're able to extract from this piano. Now, this is the same Bechstein sample that you're getting on the AP550 and the 450, but the speaker array's ability to deliver more of that sound and then the addition of the other two really takes this 750 into a different league. When comparing this to other eight speaker systems such as Roland's new LX9 or Kawhi's Novus 5S, you know, in this type of a format, does it stack up to the kind of uh, full frequency response uh, and overall sonic experience of playing some of those instruments, which of course are creeping up or over the $10,000 mark, so well over twice this price. Well, the, the clear answer is no, this is not going to uh, fully replace an experience like that. But that's not really the question. The question is more, how does this stack up against say a Kawhi CA401 or a Roland HP704? And if variety of piano tone and the detail of piano tone is something that is really important and engaging to you as a player, I think generally the market on a whole is gonna be super impressed with what the AP750 now brings to the table. Now the 750 is also using a new action, same as the 550 does, and they're using a solid wood key, although it's a slightly shorter pivot length. I can tell you that virtually all of the repertoire that I've tried on this keyboard feels very natural and very, very responsive, with the exception of maybe some of the more advanced romantic classical music, where you can start to just feel a little bit of the effects of that shorter pivot length. But I think generally speaking, digital piano manufacturers in the lower mid, mid and upper mid range are starting to realize that the majority of people enjoying these pianos are more about the electronic and the sonic experience rather than uh, the touch and feel that truly mimics you know, a 20, 30 or $100,000 grand piano. As I've said with the rest of the APs, I would also strongly suggest that people wanting to really get in there and play with the editors or explore some of the other features that come with this instrument, definitely pair this up with the Casio Music Space app. I'm really impressed with the stability and ease at which the Bluetooth connection can be uh, established. And given that the number of buttons on the user interface on the instrument itself are quite limited, you are definitely gonna wanna do that so you can avoid having to have the instruction manual out with four or five different overlays of shortcut commands. The 750 also is the only one out of the new series that comes with a quarter inch output. And unlike the 450 and 550, only comes at this point in this satin black finish with the visualizer bar. Anyways, it's always so much fun when a manufacturer just throws a super disruptive element into any kind of a marketplace. And to me, a four amplifier, eight speaker system at this price point really just kind of throws a monkey wrench into the whole party. And I'm eager, of course, to see how customers respond to that. Thank you so much for checking out today's review of Casio's new AP750. If you've enjoyed the video, got something out of it, hope you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the no notification bell because we would love to have you back as a future viewer. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube, of course. We'll see you again soon.